I would like to take this opportunity to thank and introduce our MC for this evening's event. Uh, our MC is, of course, Alan Anderson, a Professor of Research Excellence and Impact at Charles Darwin University, Annual Master of Ceremonies tonight. He has spent his entire research career in the NT after taking up a, uh, an ecologist position um, from the Uni of Melbourne with CSIRO here in Darwin in 1986. Uh, I understand uh, Alan told his family that he'd be here for a three year stay and they ended up of course uh, leading the CSIRO at Darwin Laboratory for the next 20 years before moving on to CDU. CDU. So typical Darwin story there. Um, Alan's experience here in the NT is strongly aligned with the purpose of the forum which we're launching here tonight which is to support the engagement between scientists and the public, private and academic sectors in the Territory and to amplify the value of science in the Territory which of course is a, a key objective under the priority of, uh, priorities of the Northern Territory uh, Innovation Strategy 2.0. Uh, Alan was a member of the NT Research and Development Council back in the late 1990s. Uh, I've grabbed the wrong glasses, I'm sorry, I'm reading this by Braille at the moment. Um, I'm part of the 2000 Collins Review in the Science and Innovation of the NT, an inaugural member of the uh, subsequent NT Research and Innovation Board. Um, Alan's won a number of, of accolades, there's probably too many to list here tonight, but um, suffice it to say he's, he's a distinguished member of the science community here in the Northern Territory. He was a member of the Pepper Inquiry into Fracking in the NT and a member of the Working Group so, uh, of reports uh, by the Australian Council of Learned Academies into regional university research and scientific research underpinning economic development in the NT. Um, you'll be hearing more about this second report shortly. With no further ado, please welcome Alan to the stage as our MC here tonight. Good evening everyone, it's great to see you all here and it really is a pleasure to be your MC this evening. First I'd like to pay our respects to the Larrakee people, the traditional custodians of the land that we're privileged to be on the Pazirat. We can continue to be inspired by their continuing culture, wisdom and generosity in welcoming us on their country. You're all special guests, um, but I'd all like to pay a special um, thank you to our guest speakers who have come from Interstate and I'll be introducing them to you shortly. Uh, before we get started, just some few housekeeping things. Um, the event is being filmed so we all have to be on our very best behaviour, that's all of you. Um, and to start off with, that's phones on silent, please. Uh, in case of emergency, the um, assembly is outside, so out the main doors, turn left, out the main entrance you came in to and um, assemble out the front there. The toilet's located just out through here, just to the right, as you go out these main doors. Um, so now that we've all settled in, I'd like to introduce Janine McLennan to you, who will give us a formal welcome to country. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much everyone. Um, thank you, Alan. Um, my name is Janine McLennan and I am a Larrakee woman. And firstly, as a Larrakee woman, I'd like to acknowledge um, our Larrakee families, past, present and future, of our lands and waters. And it's just important for us to acknowledge fellow First Nations groups of Indigenous, Torres Strait Islander, but for many nationalities right around the world. You know, I, we too pay our respect to yours and your families of your lands and waters, past, present and future. I've been invited here this afternoon to represent the Larrakee people and welcome you to this very special gathering. On behalf of our Larrakee ancestors and family, Bachi, Galawa, Daranaki, you've derived, this is our country. But I'd also like to make special welcome to the panellists here today for this very special gathering here the NT Science Forum networking um, event here tonight. But the importance of coming together and learning about science. I myself didn't know there were many forms of science until my son, who has autism, was generously and eagerly ready to correct me about the many forms of science. Um, I said to him, why can't you do science? He goes, which one? I said, oh, okay. So, you know, the importance of coming together and learning and experiencing your experiences that through your um, endeavours working in science. And of course the importance here in the Northern Territory 
Um, we've been connected to our lands for over 40,000 years and for many First Nation groups um, across the Northern Territory. So the doors, the opportunities, the first seat that you as scientists and the opportunities of un discovering things, undiscovering things um, and also giving us new names for things. Just remember, you can call something Janine if you want, any time. Um, so thank you very much for coming here today and sharing this experience. Um, and like Alan, you know, for many, many visitors here in Darwin, you know, they've come here and they just wanted to come and visit Darwin, but yet they've stayed here 20 years later. So that's not a common mistake. But also, we have a saying here that we never start on time because it's called Darwin time. That's why we're 15 minutes starting late. But thank you again for this opportunity. Thank you again for coming here and sharing your stories within science. Thank you for giving us the opportunity here in the Northern Territory to have this experience, but also what we can provide to you as scientists as well. Um, I would like to conclude and leave with you a, a poem from the late Reverend Wally Fijo. As yes, we are a city, and many people live and visit in Darwin, but we all have stories from Alaric country. You've come by way of the Larrakia land. You hear voices of Larrakia ancestors. When you leave, the Larrakia message will stay with you. So thank you very much, and hopefully our Larrakia message will make you come back here and stay here for another 20 years. Yes, thank you, Janine, for such a warm welcome. Um, as I mentioned, it is a privilege to be on Larrakia land. Um, and we respect the deep connection that Lara people have to the land and your ongoing stewardship of it. Uh, Martin touched earlier on the purpose of the NT Science Forum, and it's a great pleasure for me to introduce to you Cathy White, the acting CEO of the Department of Industry, Tourism and Trade. And Cathy will tell us more about it. Thank you, Janine, for that beautiful welcome to country with a scientific twist. It was, um, it was lovely. Uh, I too am very lucky to live and work on the beautiful saltwater country and I pay my respects to the Larrakia people. Um, tonight you were going to get Minister Kirby, so you might, not, might notice a couple of differences. Um, unfortunately, he was unable to be here because of Cabinet commitments and COVID challenges, which we all have. Um, but he does send his very sincere thanks, especially to our special guests, who you'll hear from later, and looks forward to engaging with the science community and the forum in the near future, which he will do. Um, I'm also fortunate, and Martin Redhead didn't actually introduce himself, um, but he <laughs> heads up um, innovation in the Department of Industry, Tourism and Trade, and I'm also very lucky to have the small but yet mighty innovation team in my division. I love my job. Um, so congratulations, um, Martin and... Um, uh, Tan for pulling together tonight. I've said that wrong, haven't I? I mean, um, I'll come back to that, sorry. Um, for pulling together this and to the fabulous science community in the room. So earlier this year, we launched the Territory Business Innovation Strategy 2.0, we always need one of those, to develop a 4 billion territory innovation ecosystem as its important part of the $40 billion economy in the territory by 2030. Science is absolutely critical in this goal, with intrinsic value and as a driver of wealth creation across our economy. Our challenge in this room is to spread the science word, get everyone hooked, and amplify the value of science in the Territory. And we're doing this through a number of initiatives. The first initiative was to commission an independent report on the opportunities for science to support that $40 billion economy. Um, in partnership with CDU, we commissioned the Australian Council, Council of Learned Academies, supported by the Australian Academy of Science, to prepare that report. And I'm delighted to let you know we've received the first draft of the report and that we will hear from Ryan, the CEO of Ecola, about the key things that they've identified in the report. And tonight, with this fabulous group, we are also launching a new Territory Science Forum to promote science collaboration with scientists across public, private and academic sectors. Um, this is a really exciting platform to celebrate good territory science, to identify and advocate for opportunities for science to support the sustainable development of the territory and to provide the underpinning foundation for innovation to support NT business growth. 
It's open to all STEM professionals. And I think we've got a very exciting um, scientist that don't always call themselves scientists, but we've got an exciting group in the Territory and we're pretty, pretty, it is going to be a pretty exciting group that comes together. The forum chair will be appointed soon and together with the committee will help shape how the forum will work and advise government on its science endeavours. It will focus on scientific matters that are really important to the Territory, the things that are critical to us. Um, I'm personally very excited, working for industry, tourism and trade, about the potential for scientific thinking to enhance all of our industry development and enrich the lives and livelihoods of Territorians, particularly those who live in regions and remote. The forum will also be well placed to engage with the broader science community across Australia and Southeast Asia, including the world-renowned leaders in science we have with us tonight. So thank you again for coming. We've got the, um, well, we'll hear from them in a second. So thank you again for your generous time and your collegiality. It's been great already. So what an opportunity for our territory science community to engage with decision makers and advisors at the very heart of the national agenda on science. I strongly encourage you all to participate and help us grow and shape our science ecosystem. The first formal meeting of the forum will be on the 11th of August and it will be a simple um, uh, invite just like Eventbrite, like we did tonight. So we have some great presenters here tonight to provide examples of what the science trajectory in the Territory could look like. So please enjoy the evening. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Cathy. The forum is, is really a really important initiative for fostering the science ecosystem here in the NT and um, promoting the positive impact science can have on the lives of Territorians. And our keynote speaker, Kathy, Dr Cathy Foley, is ideally positioned to talk about science ecosystems and the impact of science. She holds the nation's most important position in science and its engagement as Australia's Chief Scientist. She previously had a long and distinguished career with CSIRO as an internationally recognised physicist with major research achievements in superconductors and sensors. Among other things, this led to the development of the LANTEM sensor system to locate valuable deposits of minerals deep underground, resulting in discoveries and delineation of minerals worth more than $6 billion. Cathy's scientific excellence and influential leadership have been recognised with numerous awards and fellowships, including election to the Australian Academy of Science, an Order of Australia for, science, uh, for service to research science, and to the advancement of women in physics. She's also a fellow of the Australian Academy of Technological Science and Engineering, and an honorary fellow of the Australian Institute of Physics. Today, Cathy is here to bring a national and international perspective to the opportunities for science here in the NT. Please welcome Cathy. Well, hello everyone, and it's great to be here. And uh, Alan, thanks for that really lovely introduction. I always feel, I feel very embarrassed when you <laughs> have to remember I've been around for a long time. So when you add up your whole your life together, everyone's done a lot. So. I also um, want to thank you, uh, Cathy, for sharing the, the um, vision you've got for and the beginnings of the Science Forum and for STEM professionals. I think that's really important. And also hearing about the whole idea of Northern Territory's um, vision and ideas. And I, I have to say, it's great to be here with you. Uh, um, and to be in the Northern Territory, it's, I haven't been here very often. I was here uh, last time Ghana was on, and so that's really the only other time I've been here other than through the airport when travelling somewhere else. But I'm already uh, been infected. I can't wait to come back again. But um, what I think is really fantastic is seeing you as sort of like you're coming out as, um, uh, as a, a, a part of Australia that is showing an amazing ambition about how you can be a science-enabled territory and that you want to be loud and proud about it, which I think is fantastic because that is how we build economies, that's how we create prosperity and well-being for all of us. So um, the other thing that I guess it, I want to point to too is that often when you're outside the Northern Territory and Northern Australia is that you actually see this place as a great place for a holiday. And I guess you probably saw that as, as the um, COVID restrictions have reduced. 
You've got amazing culture. I mean, the landscape is unbelievable. Uh, the weather, the people. But you all know, too, that Northern Territory's got a lot more to offer. And it's because of the minds and the imagination of you that we're actually beginning to see something which, from my perspective in hearing about it this afternoon, is so exciting. And it's because of this knowledge-based community that I think it brings me to the next thing I want to do. And Janine's uh, left already, but I do want to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands here, the uh, Larrakia people. And I want to pay my respects to those who are caring for the lands, the old ones who've come before and the young ones who are going to follow. Because I think something which has been really reinforced to me um, just through my, my whole life, and it's been really growing to a great crescendo just in the last couple of months, is that the, um, the Indigenous people's contributions of teaching and learning and committing to building a brighter future together is something which I can only be so grateful for. Because I can't emphasise enough about the Indigenous knowledge that we have so much to learn from because it's substantial. And we must facilitate genuine engagement so that we can make sure that we can uh, come together and be able to bring the Aboriginal knowledge and wisdom with the science and the approaches that I know uh, so that we can do amazing things. And a, and a really good classic one is the Western Arnhem Land uh, Fire Abatement Project, which is changing the way we go about trying to manage um, in a very best practice way man land management. And it's this respectful learning opportunity that's been a recurring theme um, in my discussions with science leaders here and internationally as well, because I've been talking with people particularly from New Zealand recently, but also the public service across Australia, and more specifically, how we can better utilise, uplift and access Indigenous science and knowledge. So it's just part of our, the way we do things here. I also want to use this as a moment to just acknowledge the important guests here as well. So it's great to be on this platform with Bronwyn Fox, who is from CSIRO, is Chief Scientist there. I've worked with her for very many years and it's been great to do things uh, together and we're doing even more together now. And with Martin Redhead, who's the Director of the Business and Innovation Department of Industry, Tourism and Trade. He's part of our Forum of Australian Chief Scientists. So he's your pseudo Chief Scientist and Chief Science Advisor, which is fantastic. And it's actually great to meet him in person. So thanks for um, organising us today. Uh, because it's been terrific to see uh, how he's been able to introduce Northern Australian input into the Forum of Australian Chief Scientists, which has been really important. And um, of course we've got um, Alan here, who's a fellow of the Australian Academy of Science. It's great that you're here too, and, and we go back to our, our um, days at CSRO together. But also um, Ryan Wynn, who's the CEO of um, ACOLA, which is the Australian um, uh, Council of, of Learned Academies. It's a terrible name, isn't it? Anyway, sorry about that. Anyway, I, um, I want to begin though by highlighting the value of Indigenous science, because it has a unique value proposition. And we must embrace this knowledge if we're going to make the most of our full human potential. Because science and research are humanity's superpower. And it's been, if we think that Indigenous knowledge and culture has been around for so many years, if we're going to make sure that we uh, deal with the issues that are ahead of us, and we're just hearing at the moment with Parliament sitting in Canberra for the first time with the new, new government, that there's a lot of challenge ahead of us and we need to make sure that we use every bit of wisdom, knowledge and human resource that we have on tap. And the broader research sector must continue to incorporate this knowledge and value and make it so that it's an essential component and that we realise its full power. And we must facilitate genuine engagement. It shouldn't be just something that's Mickey Mouse. And we know that if we can do that, the unique prospects that this can contribute to is going to be something which will impact our biotech, our space industries, our mineral exploration and mineral resources. And that knowledge about the environment and sustainable energy solutions are all going to be better, richer and, um, and something which will be much more sustainable. So I think it's great that we're celebrating that and the success stories that we're hearing all the time as we progress towards this greater and brighter future together. And there's also a huge ambition 
for leading high-tech industries here in Northern Australia. I am so excited to hear about the different programs and ideas that are happening here from new energy creation of uh, amazing energy, uh, uh, renewable energy, which sounds like it's going to power the whole world um, with uh, with, ooh, sorry, with um, wires going all around the place to uh, link up Darwin to Singapore to uh, USA. Uh, it's just, uh, it's going to be amazing. But the pandemic has shown us that we cannot rely on being a service-based economy. If you think of our economy at the moment, we've got a lot of mining, we've got a lot of agriculture, and we have tourism, and we've got higher education. And there are top exports. Now, we all know what happens when there's a, um, a, a vulnerable time, such as a pandemic or a, a, a global financial crisis, is that tourism and higher education get really um, impacted. We also know that mining is changing substantially, that by 2050, when we get to zero emissions and we have true closed loop economy, we're going to be seeing mining companies becoming those great recycling companies. Um, and we'll also be seeing an impact on agriculture, whatever that might be, whether it's instead of having cattle, we have, um, we have uh, cell lines to create meat and protein, or whether it's climate change that means that we can't do what we did before and we have to think of new ways of feeding ourselves. So these are the signals that by 2050, we are going to have to think very differently about our world. And so to address this, Australia and the Northern Territory must have a renewed focus on the knowledge economy and this is what I am seeing here in truckloads, and which is something which I hope I can, in my role as Australia's chief scientist, sci yes, scientist, that's what I am, is, um, <laughs> is able to connect in with, this, with you as this new, um, um, new um, now I've got to get this right, science forum is going to, of STEM professionals that, that I can hopefully, through, through Martin and, uh, and the rest of you, be able to be that conduit into Canberra so that we can make sure everything's all lined up. Because knowledge-based industries have been identified to be the future driver of Australia's economy. And they're in areas, as we know, in low emissions tech, in pharmaceuticals, artificial intelligence, there's automation. And in a similar vein, the Northern Territory is making great strides in these areas. And so we can only think, see that this is going to be a bright future. So let's talk about uh, Northern Territory's role in supporting Australia's technical and digital future. I have to say that most people, when they think of Northern Territory, do not think of you as a digital powerhouse. And we need to change this. Because it's so impressive to see the things you are happening here. Seeing a t-shirt that says NASA base here is amazing. And it's a real one, it's not a fake one. And it's impressive that you had a rocket launch um, from NASA, or by NASA, from the Arnhem Space Centre. And it was the first successful Australian rocket launch in over 25 years. And uh, I'm going to just look forward to uh, watching. I think we heard it was a few seconds of excitement and a lifetime of, of um, goosebumps because it was so exciting. But we also need to acknowledge the broader impact of digitisation, uh, the much bigger emphasis on knowledge-based digital industries, because you can do that anywhere. In fact, one of the things that's been, I've heard from somewhere is that so long as you've got good coffee, good schools and a decent internet connection, you can work anywhere. And this is actually what um, Mike Cannon-Brooks told me when, I was, uh, when he said he completely changed his whole business model from instead of building a big building in the middle of Sydney, he now allows his workers to work anywhere and then he has small hubs. And this is something which I think is really an amazing opportunity for a, um, a, a particularly a territory like, uh, like Northern Territory, which is a lot of land and not that many people, you can actually still be engaged fully. So these are all possible though, because you also have great research here and uh, you're leading in so many areas of innovation. And I'll just go through a couple of examples which I found out which I was amazed about. So there's the Cooperative Research Centre for Northern Australia, which has been you know, doing things in agriculture, food and aquaculture, but also science service delivery and traditional owner-led management and development, which I think is really important. And it's fantastic to see that this is leading to an ambition which is actually infectious when you just come here. And it's impressive to see that you, um, even though you're one of the most remote parts of Australia, that you've been able to embrace not just digital, but also the other area which I'm working on big time, which is quantum. And uh, the idea, and um, I have to say I'm completely thrilled about this, 
that you have the ambition to be the quantum leader of the equator is something which I'm going to be putting in our strategy um, because the government's asked me to make a quantum strategy for Australia. So your ambition there is fantastic and um, your work to develop um, sustainable energy solutions is mind-blowing. Some of the ideas that I heard this afternoon, they're not just ideas, but they're actually things which are in, in, um, in train, which are really going to be uh, something that will put Australia as the um, renewable energy powerhouse for the world is going to be something which I think we'll be all very proud to be part of. But then you've also got things like the amazing Jindalee over the horizon radar, which is based on and has been upgraded with a quantum clock which is being developed by the University of Adelaide. And the fact that you've got that science pushing the boundaries of knowledge and being able to be implemented here so that you actually have the ability to have that security is um, very important. And of course the other is the unique opportunities in digital biotech. So I want to ex acknowledge that this new um, science forum, it actually provides opportunities for making sure that we have this as, the, um, rec as recognised across the country. Because it's only when we start doing that that you'll start seeing the migration of people saying this is a place, a great place to come. So being the most um, regional capital, there's also clear implications of how we think about developing the um, North agenda and making sure that the investment is the right investment. So that's something I'll be taking away with me. So then we have to think about building local skills and more flexible ways of working because this is going to be critical if you're going to succeed. And since distance is no longer a hindrance, it means that there'll be lots of possibilities here. So this will enable a locally trained and locally based STEM capable workforce. And to make this happen, we, though, we need to have really clear STEM career pathways. I don't know about you, but most people when they're at school have no idea what a scientist does and they have no idea where they work because all they think they do is wear white coats and then maybe in tooth toothpaste ads or something like that, or maybe in a university, and they see that there are no jobs in universities, so, um, and so they get this idea there are no jobs in STEM, and so therefore they do the wrong subjects of school, and so it goes on. And as a consequence, we don't have the STEM workforce we need. So I'm hoping that the, um, the new uh, science forum is going to really help me support the STEM career pathways work here. Because if we are able to have sufficient STEM skilled work, workers, we're going to be able to move mountains as a country. We're going to be able to do, uh, have the prosperity and the health and well-being for all of us. And it doesn't matter where you are, and we have a government at the moment, which you will have heard them say, and our Prime Minister say, that it doesn't matter what your postcode is, it doesn't matter where you're located, that you have an equal opportunity to be engaged to have the life you want to have and the health and well-being that everyone living here should, um, should be able to have. So COVID has shown us that you can remote in, um, you can work remotely and that it is a realistic opportunity. And digital technology is enabling us to be more, um, say that again, more for our flexible and agile and, and ways of working that are allowing us to be able to be here as a centre and then reach out to the rest of the world. Um, we're also beginning to see things such as virtual laboratories, which is something which when I was in CSRO looking at um, and more recently thought of what I call the conceptual scientist, where it doesn't matter where you are, so long as you've got great ideas and access to engage and collaborate, you can do things like um, access equipment down in Melbourne or in another country overseas and be able to do your science regardless of where you are. So my challenge to you is to consider how to export your skills to the rest of Australia because you've got amazing imagination here and how we can then take that to the rest of the world because there's so many great selling points. And this is all about making the most of your geographical location because often, I know, we've always thought of the Northern Territory and Northern Australia as being you know, a little bit in the heart, too hard basket, when in actual fact, you're perfectly located for so many things. For example, the engagement with Indonesia is something which you might have seen in the news that the Prime Minister and the Minister for Science and um, Husik has decided that I've got to be involved with. And I'm thinking, that is fantastic. I don't even know where to start, but now I do. I'm going to be coming and knocking on your doors because you have such a strong relationship there. And our relationship in Australia's north, uh, with our northern neighbours is absolutely crucial. And I'm looking forward to going there soon and be making the most of the introduction, so thank you very much. 
I also look forward to having the support of the Territory that's had a significant history in so many areas around our local region. And because of that, it will mean that we can build up the soft diplomacy as well as the well-being of our nearest neighbours. Because as we build up in tech, and as we have our quantum future, and as we have the sorts of things of, um, of being able to deal with climate change that, and the new energy futures, we need to make sure that we don't race ahead and leave our, our neighbours behind. And we have to work out how to engage with them and bring them with us. So my call to action, as I shared these last final thoughts are, that we need to capitalise on our advantages, find those synergies, and make sure that we focus on our strengths and make sure we have the critical mass in the areas that matter. We need to invest in the critical technologies such as digital and quantum because critical technologies, and I read this in a, in a, in a, um, a brief I had yesterday, critical technologies actually drive uh, economic growth and a whole lot of other good things too. And we need to identify the STEM career pathway so that we make sure that we can not only secure the skill sets we need to deliver all this great stuff, but also so that our young people have the careers that are well paid, are interesting, exciting, and it's something which they can you know, really feel like they've got a future for themselves. And we need to make sure that we have the right human capital, knowledge and know-how, recognising there's so much to gain by embracing Indigenous knowledge and wisdom and embracing our full human potential. This will support us to achieve our and your ambition and to be a knowledge-based economy, which will be really critical for us. And it's um, in the hands of the uh, Territory science community to seize this opportunity because you're going to be the powerhouse. And it's important that you show uh, by this um, launching of the science forum that this is like a big signal, a big banner coming up saying that this is important. And so that's why I thought it was really important to be here tonight and so pleased to be here. Um, the path ahead, I'm going to say, is not easy because there's some challenges there. But I know that you and I have that passion to make it um, happen, the drive to build the Territory's future. And I hope I can be there to support you in that. So I'm now looking forward to hearing, because I'm the person who's just selling policy words and things like that. I'm, I, 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 I guess I hope that I create the, the things that allow things to happen. That's probably one of the hardest jobs of moving out of a research organisation into, uh, into a government role like this because I don't get to be in there doing the stuff. So you're going to hear now from Bronwyn Fox, who actually does the stuff, and also from Brian uh, to hear about the opportunities and challenges that, the, um, that his work is, is showing up. So I'll leave it to them to take it on from here. So thank you very much. Thanks, Cathy, uh, for being here and sharing your insights into the science of the future and the opportunities we have here in the NT. I've got a confession to make. I don't have a white lab coat, and I've never had one. <coughs> Our next speaker is one of Australia's most important advocates for industry-engaged research, Professor Bronwyn Fox. Bronwyn is CSIRO's fourth female chief scientist, a position she took up last year following her role as Deputy Vice-Chancellor Research and Enterprise at Swinburne University. She's a materials engineer with a keen interest in the manufacturing of lightweight materials. The materials might be lightweight, but Bronwyn is a heavyweight in Australian <laughs> science. Please welcome Bronwyn. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alan, and good evening, everyone. It really is just wonderful to be here. It's such a privilege to be here to discuss all the important roles that science and technology can play in the future prosperity of the Territory. I'd also like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land, the Larrakia people, and to pay my respects to their elders past and present. I thank them for caring for the country that we are on now and for sharing their knowledge, wisdom and culture. As Chief Scientist at CSIRO, I've had the opportunity to be part of our new Indigenous Science and Engagement Program, where we're working on initiatives that are co-led with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and communities, and it's just such a privilege to be part of that. The knowledge held by Australia's first scientists is immense, and we are all beneficiaries of the sharing of that knowledge. 
Now, my own um, connection to the Northern Territory goes back into the mid-90s, and um, I, I've kind of done a big circle in my career. I started my career, my first job out, out of uni as a scientist was at CSIRO, and it was such an incredible way to start my career. And now I've, I've come back in my new capacity, and my new office is just a few hundred metres from that first lab where I, I started my working life. But um, the connection to the Territory was that in the mid-90s I um, took a holiday and did a camping trip through Kakadu and Catherine Gorge with two CSIRO entomologists. So I'm very familiar with um, some of the amazing nature that you have here, but most specifically very familiar with the incredible array of termite mounds that you have. <laughs> and um, I learnt a lot from that particular trip, it was really fascinating. So thank you to Cathy White and Martin Redhead for your um, hospitality and for the invitation to be here today. Um, it's just inspiring to hear your vision, but today we really got a much um, in-depth uh, insight into the way that you're going to execute your plans, and that was really exciting and inspiring. So thank you for the great work that you're doing and for including us here. Thank you so much to Australia's wonderful Chief Scientist, Dr Cathy Foley, who's not only been a mentor to me, but so many of my colleagues and close friends, and she's just been an inspiration to so many of us, and we couldn't have a better Chief Scientist for Australia. Thank you, Cathy, for all the work that you're doing. And thanks for setting that vision for a collaborative and science-enabled Northern Territory. It's really inspiring. There's a wealth of possibility there and a lot to be excited about. So first of all, I want to share with you a little bit about what we're working on at CSIRO and give you an insight into the global megatrends that we see shaping Australia in the next 20 years. I'll then narrow down the focus to the territory and our history here, the work we're doing today and the opportunities for the future. But first, let me give you a little bit of a background about CSIRO, Australia's National Science Agency. We're one of the largest multidisciplinary science agencies in the world. When I started at CSIRO, one of my colleagues in Germany said, are you the Helmholtz, are you the Fraunhofer, or are you the Max Planck? And in fact, we're all three in one. And the work that CSIRO does is just incredible and inspiring, and it's such a privilege to be part of CSIRO. We provide all levels of state and federal government with scientific advice and analysis to inform policy making. We work with thousands of businesses, both large and small, across every sector of the Australian economy and with every major Australian university. And that's one thing I'm really passionate about, having been a partner of CSIRO on the other side in the university sector, I'm really passionate about making sure that every university has that same great experience that I did in working with CSIRO and the same benefits. Our mission for 100 years has been to solve the greatest challenges with science and technology, and by investing in science for impact, we deliver more than $4.5 billion in value to the Australian economy every year. For every dollar that we invest in science, we deliver around about $7.60 in economic, social and environmental value to Australia. In an advanced economy, investment in research and development is the engine room for growth and prosperity. I've seen that time and time again. And we can really see that plainly demonstrated in those figures. So I'm now going to talk a little bit more about our research strategy, but first of all, the contribution that, um, that the team in, and more broadly our community of scientists that are affiliated with the Chief Scientist and my role are, are working on. So there are four key initiatives that are priorities for, um, for, for us in the next, over the next three years, and they are aligned with CSIRO's four values. So whenever I, I've moved and joined an organisation, the first thing I do is look at the values of that organisation. CSIRO's values are people first, further together, making it real and trusted. So for people first, the initiative that we have that's aligned with that particular value is a recruitment campaign to invest in the next generation of science leaders in our community. We're recruiting 200 early and mid-career researchers and they will be aligned with our missions and future science platforms in particular. And that's um, such a privilege to be part of. If you're interested in finding out more, the campaign is called Impossible Without You and you can, you'll find out about it if you Google it and it'll be on our website. It's featuring prevalently on social media at the moment. Further Together for me is about how we 
um, unleash the collective power of the network and, and how we can work together. And that involves Indigenous science and engagement and our Indigenous um, partnerships and university partnerships. And uh, there'll be more coming forward about that very soon. Making it real, when um, Cathy was CSIRO's chief scientist, she worked on, on a, a really important initiative that she mentioned in her speech called Labs of the Future. And this year we're, we're catalyzing some great scientists with great ideas about how they can enable remote access to their laboratories, how they can do their science more safely through digitalization. And then we're, we're going to be learning from those initial seed projects and then scaling them up in the future. And then finally, Trusted will be about a refresh of our future science and technology plan. So one of the areas that we invest in in CSIRO is really um, risky, cutting edge science that uh, comes under our future science platforms. And we're looking at what are the next future science platforms that we need to be investing in now so that Australia is at the cutting edge of that science in the next 20 to 30 years. So six years ago, CSIRO transformed the way that we think about research through our challenges and really looking at the six great challenges that we saw um, for Australia that were global challenges that were particularly important to Australia. So that included a shift to climate change mitigation and adaptation, digital transformation, agile manufacturing and a One Health approach to protecting Australia from biosecurity threats like pandemics and like foot and mouth. It saw us refocus our research and commercialisation efforts around the six great challenges we face as a nation. Our food security and quality, our energy and resources, our health and wellbeing, the resilience of our environment, the innovation of our industries and our security in the region. Two years ago, we announced a program of missions that were launched to help Australia tackle these challenges. And we've now launched missions to end plastic waste, to catalyse a new hydrogen industry, to build resilience to drought, produce more food more sustainably, and to transform our agricultural exports with much more yet to come. We're co-leading these missions with a broad coalition of partners across the university sector, government and industry, because the challenges we face are ones that we all share and we, they simply cannot be solved by one organisation alone. But by working in a network ecosystem of collaborators, we can access our collective power and knowledge to achieve incredible things. COVID-19 showed us that. And we need to do that again and again and again to use science to help us address the challenges ahead. I'm going to touch briefly now on the global mega trends that I mentioned earlier because they're so relevant to the conversation about the Territory. The megatrends come from the 2022 CSIRO Our Future World report launched yesterday by our fabulous CEO, Dr Larry Marshall. And if you haven't had a chance to read about it, you can find out, you can download the report online, but you can also see his speech on ABC iView, and I highly recommend that you have a look at it. It's, it was just incredible to be there in the room. CSIRO has been analysing megatrends since 2009 and I know that it's something that I always look forward to was the release of the megatrend report and I would just read it from cover to cover and it uses thousands of data points collected over decades. These megatrends are driven by geo powerful geopolitical, economic, social, technological and environmental forces and the impact they will have on Australia's people, communities and industries is going to be really significant. Over the next two decades, the megatrends forecast a future where a, a changing climate leads to multiple concurrent climate hazards that overlap and compound, where the global shift towards net zero becomes a massive opportunity for Australia to transform our economy. Where future health risks from more pandemics, drug resistant superbugs and chronic diseases continues to escalate, where digital disruption transforms every industry and replaces 40% of the jobs we have today with new ones, where the exponential power of artificial intelligence helps us solve our greatest challenges, like it's helping us to outthink bushfires, stabilise our energy grid and accelerate vaccine development today. Where growing geopolitical tensions continue to disrupt global patterns of trade, and where empowered consumers demand trust and transparency from their governments and institutions. 
These seven waves of disruption are bearing down on Australia. There are risks, but there are also opportunities in all of them. But science gives us the power to invent the kind of future we want to live in, a future where we prosper. The key is, to, is being able to see the megatrends clearly enough to inform the actions we take and acting together at the pace and scale required to change our trajectory. I'm going to focus on the territory now and the powerful role that a collaborative science and technology community can play here against the backdrop of these national but also local challenges. CSIRO has been working in the Territory since the 1920s and we've conducted everything from research into pineapple and coconut diseases to flying foxes, prickly pear, buffalo fly, cattle breeding and a vaccine for contagious bovine pleuropneumonia amongst many, many other things. We've conducted land resource surveys over decades to understand how the Territory's land and water resources could be leveraged for development while still preserving environmental and cultural heritage. Importantly, these assessments have resulted in new research partnerships between CSIRO, the National Indigenous Australians Agency, the National Native Title Council, because partnerships with Indigenous communities are absolutely critical. We're also working with Indigenous leaders on land management in Kakadu National Park, on telehealth to help deliver high quality medical care to remote communities, on artificial intelligence and satellite technology to help indigenous rangers manage feral herds of cattle on their land. Linking back to the challenges and missions I mentioned earlier, we see big opportunities for science enabled future in the territory, particularly in the field of critical minerals, space, energy and agriculture. And critical min minerals has been a, a really hot topic of discussion this afternoon, I have to tell you. We're really thrilled to be collaborating with ACOLA, the Australian Academy of Science and the Northern Territory Government on what these opportunities will look like and Ryan's going to cover these next. But I'll touch on three areas now where CSIRO has projects underway. The first is ag tech innovation, the need to provide more food more sustainably as the world population in continues to grow and demand for protein increases. This creates opportunities for the Territory's high value livestock sector as well as potential new revenue sources from growing legumes and processing them into plant based protein products for export. CSIRO is already collaborating with Charles Darwin University under our future protein mission to innovate new value added products. And you may be familiar with one of CSIRO's innovation, which is the um, V2 Foods, which was a spin out from CSIRO technology, uh, which was responsible for the Rebel Whopper burger, which uh, you know, is apparently really tasty. I haven't managed to have one yet. The second is renewable energy technology to provide the energy security for remote communities, as well as the opportunity to export Australian sunshine around the world. CSRO is collaborating with the Northern Territory Government and multiple industry partners to assess the viability of a large scale Northern Territory low emissions hub in Darwin. The hub would act as a catalyst for new net zero industries and enable the development of a hydrogen export industry. We're also part of the Alice Springs Future Grid project, working on how Alice Springs can reach 50% renewables by 2030. The third opportunity is about investing in the livability and resilience of our tropical capital. The CSIRO-led Darwin Living Lab is working to integrate science with local knowledge to mitigate, mitigate heat and improve urban design for a cooler and more sustainable Darwin. The lab is holding a symposium next week on August the 3rd, so head to the CSIRO website for more details and encourage you to register and attend. There are so many more examples that I could mention, but the message I want to leave you with is this. There are challenges and opportunities ahead, but by working together to harness the collective power of our network, we can put science to work to create a more prosperous and more resilient future in the Territory. The establishment of the Northern Territory Science Forum is an important step towards this future, and I'm so honoured to be part of its formation. But now the real work begins. The success of this forum will depend on collaboration between everyone in this room and many, many others as we grow and expand our network. This is the beginning of a journey that is paved with possibilities and Ryan's going to talk about so many of those possibilities in the next talk. 
I'm so optimistic about the future and I know I speak for everyone at Team CSIRO when I say we want to work with you to build a vibrant innovation ecosystem here and to collaborate and grow even better science enabled Northern Territory. Thank you. Thanks, Bronwyn, for sharing how CSIRO is responding to the big science challenges facing our country and for your thoughts on science opportunities here in the Northern Territory. As Bronwyn said, our next speaker, Ryan Wynne, will talk more about those opportunities. Ryan is Executive Officer and Director at the Australian Council of Learned Academies. ACOLA provides policy advice to government, promotes that advice to the wider community and contributes to public debate about science. ACOLA has produced horizon scanning reports to the Commonwealth Science Council and NT have recently commissioned a report on how science research can boost the NT economy. Brian is here today to provide an overview of the report's findings. He brings nearly two decades of experience running strategic policy research uh, and program areas across various Australian government departments to ACOLA. Please welcome Ryan. Thank you for having me here today. Um, I should confess I've never owned a white lab coat either and I'm actually not even a scientist. I Look, when I, my background is very much in social policy and I think the important part of that is social policy and social sciences is just as critical as the research as well because that's actually what takes the science from the lab into the real world development and I think that's the really important thing to say everyone's input is really critical um, so thank you for having me today and even if I don't have a white lab coat um, <laughs> um, it's an absolute pleasure to be in the territory it has been way too long since I was last here and after coming from a Canberra winter with minus four mornings it's an absolute pleasure to enjoy the warm weather up here <clears throat> Um, thank you for having me, Northern Territory and the CDU. It's been a pleasure to be working with you on what the future holds for the Territory. It is very bright, it, but it does make dedicated effort. Firstly, I'd like to thank the traditional owners of the land we're meeting today, the Larrakia people, and your elders, past and present. I want to acknowledge, acknowledge your stewardship of the land. I acknowledge any other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here today. I would also like to acknowledge the custodians of the land that I work on, the Ngunnawal people, and the land of the other Wiradjuri people of where I grew up on in Fremantle. Their knowledge has continued to influence me in many ways through my career. Akola acknowledges the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are Australia's first knowledge keepers and how critical it is to the future of Australia, and we share, you, share with you that journey. I want to acknowledge the important speakers in this room, Dr Kathy Thvoli, Professor Robin Fox, Cathy White, Martin Redhead, and the fellows of the Academy, including Alan. Thank you very much for the emceeing today. I also wanted to acknowledge any Aboriginal, non-Aboriginal, early, early and mid-career researchers in the room. You are the future of the research sector here, and, it, and we need to listen to what you have and support you because we haven't always got things right, and actually innovation comes from everywhere in a sector. It doesn't just come from the people who have been around for decades. So who are we? As Alan outlined, the Australian Council of Landed Academies. We are the body that brings together the five learned academies of Australia. That's the Australian Academy of Science, Engineering Technological Sciences, Social Sciences, Humanities, and Health and Medical Sciences. And together they represent three and a half thousand of Australia's great minds across topics. But we also appreciate there's important knowledge and expertise across Australia. Um, and we work as close as we can with them. Our work covers horizon scanning reports, briefings to ministers, supporting departments and sharing public advice um, and we look forward to keeping, keeping on going, doing that. We've been around for about 70 years and over the last five years our work has covered everything from artificial intelligence, disability inclusion, improving research impact and reach reasonable universities and the energy transition. But we're here to talk about the Northern Territory and the science enabled future. As outlined by Bronwyn, you wouldn't be, it would be hard to not realise that we have some really strong headwinds. A pandemic, climate change, increasing digitisation and market disruptions, internet 3.0, 
changing commodity prices and increasingly international industry expectations for a carbon neutrality. We also have the potential for you know, devastating food, foot and mouth disease that's at our doorstep right at the moment. The headwinds will only increase, especially as industries are further digitised and we rapidly head towards two degrees of warming, resulting in greater climate volatility, hotter average temperatures and the corresponding significant health impacts. Sorry for being such a downer. <laughs> but, as depressing as that sounds, there are significant opportunities for the Territory going forward to respond and adapt to these headwinds and forge its own unique and successful path. Science and, as the Territory Economic Reconstruction Commission acknowledged, the Territory is at a turning point. Science and research will be critical to the Territory and to, to diversify and grow its economy, to create opportunities for young and older Territorians to benefit from the promise of the 21st century. Importantly, it can also support enduring social, cultural benefits, flourishing biodiversity and a path to self-sufficiency. Notwithstanding the necessity, the Territory has some of the... Notwithstanding this, the Territory has the groundwork as we've seen from the past and current successes and many of the right people are probably in this room. The fact that we're meeting tonight and this new network shows that you individually and collectively are committed to the future of the Territory. While the Territory's re research ecosystem has aspects of fragmentation and there are gaps in capability and capacity, the sector has access to a diverse range of experienced national and two-based research institutes across STEM and HASP professions. Undertakes research that is globally competitive in critical areas, particularly health, and clearly a supportive government environment by, from the federal and the, and the territory for a future enabled by science. There are some clear opportunities for science to leverage improvements over the coming decades, especially across agriculture, critical minerals, energy, space, defence, health and digital industries. With the right investment and commitment, it would not be hard to envisage a science-enabled future for the Territory, including a net green energy exporter, leveraging solar, hydrogen and tidal opportunities, a national source of accessible, stable and reliable critical minerals and metals, a leader in cultural and environmental management, a sustainable source of local food in regional areas, a key partner in developing innovation at the nexus of creative and digital technologies, and a global partner in space industries. I know I'm likely preaching to the converted in this room. <laughs> so I won't go into all those, and I look forward to um, finishing the report and providing them, and hopefully you'll see some of those further details. In our project, we've explored a range of these potential opportunities. Well, many will be lead to, many of these will may, may ugh, excuse me, while many of these will need to be led by industry, there are things the Territory and its research community can do to position it to take these in hand. Already, agriculture contributes around $924 million and around 2,000 jobs to the Territory's economy. But we have opportunities to leverage science to improve this through through a supply of improved local and healthy food supplies to the Territory and use technologies to double down on the value of the, of the proposition. Through technologies such as distributed ledger technologies, we can, we can show increased value that will make the products more premium across the global market against those sort of headwinds that we're talking about around competition. Additionally, <clears throat> additionally there will be insights into automation robotics and blockchain technologies that would reduce the production costs and increase that premium value further. Additionally, we are now starting to properly appreciate the deep knowledge of our land and the properties of the plants. Led by indigenous knowledges, there are opportunities to better understand the, the unique molecular properties of plants for food, materials and pharmacology, such as the spinifex based nanotube technology that's been developed by, you know, in it, by the University of Queensland, which is Phenomenal. It's really interesting to see what that's application and to change the way latexes are developed. And that's based on Indigenous knowledges. But we need to have the right collaboration, collaborative relationships, intellectual property and food standards understanding to take forward that knowledge. While agriculture and the resources, especially critical minerals, are vital opportunities that present, they also present a key challenge. 
without debate, they're going to continue to be the most significant contributors to the territory's carbon impact. Especially when we consider energy, logistics, metal, cement, and other inputs into those processes. The territory must lean in to understanding, developing, and implementing mitigation and abatement strategies. We know carbon capture and storage and carbon capture and utilisation can work, but there are technical and implementation issues that need to be progressed. Also, there are some that are developing more than others. But we need to understand their viability, we need to understand their successfulness, and we also need to understand the social acceptance of those sorts of technologies. These can range, the applications can range from carbon stor storage and surveillance and underground and ocean carbon sinks to carbon capture and utilisation where carbon is is used in carbon neutral building materials, used, in, used as carbon for carbonated drinks, as well as other purposes. Um, in 2021, according to the International Energy Agency, <coughs> plan, there were plans for more than 100 new carbon capture and storage facilities globally. The Territory should be an active partner in the decarbonisation R&D. And the agreement with IMPEX underscores the, the commitment of the Territory in that. But the science must also happen in the Territory and occur here, not just because the, there is locally relevant ways it needs to occur, but also the, the knowledge and the capability needs to be built here, including with the skills. Ooh, my screen has just done something very funny. Building on this, with the open... Sp Building on this, there are op open spaces, where the open space lower electromagnetic fields, fewer fight paths, and extreme and remote techno environments. The territory could be positioned itself better as a test bed for new technologies, particularly those that could be applied in mining, defence, space, and autonomous and semi-autonomous air and land transport systems. This will allow the, the territory to be on the forefront and early adopter of the na for the nation and help underpin and be a catalyst for the critical local workforce that will also be needed in the renewable energy sector, resources, space, and defence industries. Many of the challenges in the Territory need a quantum leap rather than just the incremental approaches that other states have taken. You have an opportunity to jump ahead now if you think about the right science and engagement. Government will be a key partner in this through its procurement, planning, and investment activities. And that will enable research infrastructure around industry engagement, skills and key partnerships like organisations like CSIRO. Moving along, with Garber on this week, it's important to remind ourselves that the Territory has a well-established and fantastic art and creative sector and that the arts and research have always been intrinsically linked. Technology has driven arts through new mediums and FICA, but equally the arts have driven technology, whether it be through new applications, user design, websites, music, and most recently, augmented reality. The NT creative industries and cultural tourism collectively is continuing to expand, even through COVID, and in 2020, 2020 was valued at over $1 billion. You have an amazing creative sector here. There are, incre there are increasing intersections between creative and technologies, and, and this is commonly known as the Createch sector which has seen deeper investment across the globe, which is leading to new innovations in artificial intelli intelligence, algorithms, virtual reality, software, and transforming services, products, and processes. The territories should look to activities such as those occurring in the United Kingdom to support local creatives to develop STEM skills and partner with industry to develop new opportunities to, in immersive and augmented reality, as well as gaming industries and fashion. There are amazing intersections between these technologies that are at the heart of, of some of the strengths of the Territory. And so it's leaning into those, as well as those, those opportunities I identified wrongly. There are some unique things that looking at this, what the Territory has based here. Alignment and collaboration between entity creatives, tech, research and industry sectors and strategies can foster crossover projects, new digital content and applications. But achieving this, again, requires investment in STEM skill pathways, as well as investments in the underpinning technology, computing, and data infrastructure. 
Realising these opportunities will not be easy, but the proof is in the pudding. They've already been amazing successes grown from the, within the MT, and this bodes well for the ability to translate science and commercialise that success, from Rock Oyster to Savannah Burning to the Space Launch. We know that science-led science -led research leads to job, jobs, economic growth, and increased tourism. And as Bronwyn identified, every, we've seen ROI of research that leads to $7.6 every dollar invested. This is an amazing opportunity for the Territory to, to achieve that as well. But the question for the Territory is not should it lead in, lead in to this opportunity, but how can it put its best foot forward on the accelerator of the research ecosystem through timely, focused and proportionate ways given its financial resources and population size. You can't do everything, but it's about looking at your strengths and, and working together. To drive the, science, the future science enable opportunities, strong collaborations, partnerships within and with those external to the Territory, science leadership, a deep and sustained focus on workforce development, including starting at school, and purposeful and strategic investments will be needed to leverage Territory's geographic and technological strengths. Like a village raising a child, a research ecosystem needs you. The Science Forum is an important step in this process to ensure we are working together regardless of our research discipline or the sector that we work in. It will take scientists and researchers in government, industry and academia to achieve this. It doesn't matter which lab coat you wear, where you work, you're important to this journey. Through this, we can lead to better informed and assist the decision makers in the NT and the Australian Government to help provide the environment that you need. And as Cathy outlined, there are opportunities through the Chief Scientists, through Martin and others to engage better with the Australian Government. And we've shown that the tyranny of distance doesn't, doesn't exist. It can be overcome. Our colleagues work with the NT Government and CDU goes deeper into the arcs that I've sort of outlined and the challenges. I am pleased to advise you that the work in the report is in the final stages of drafting and pending feedback from the reviewers and a range of other stakeholders who I hope that will be with the government in the next few weeks. We are so pleased that we've been invited to be here, to be part of this launch and the important steps in the journey that you're on. The Cola and the Learning Academies stand ready to be tapped into and be available to you to help on that journey. I look forward to what the Territory can achieve, but I'm sure without a doubt it will be amazing. So thank you for having me here. Thanks, Ryan. You've identified many exciting opportunities for science and research here in the ENT, but also that we've got a lot of work ahead of us to capitalise on them. As all of our speakers have said, the NT Science Forum can play a really important role in helping deliver on all this potential. You're all invited to the first meeting, uh, which is to be held at the CDU Waterfront Campus on Thursday the 11th of August. And I could ask if before the meeting you could think about what you would like the forum to achieve. How can we best promote scientific research and how science can be best applied to improve the life, the lives of all Territorians? So if you'd like to attend that first forum, um, you can register on Eventbrite like you did for tonight or just drop an email to innovation at nt.gov.au. So I'd like to, to finish just by um, thanking all our presenters, Janine McLennan for her Welcome to Country, Department CEO Cathy White, Australia's Chief Scientist Cathy Foley, CSIRO's Chief Scientist Bronwyn Fox and Director of Ecola Brian Wynn. I'd also like to thank Inspired NT and the Business Innovation Team for organising the launch. So the team is led by Martin Redhead. Um, as you've heard, and so I keep on reminding Martin, his father Trevor was a long-term researcher with CSIRO um, who worked out of the Darwin lab in the 1970s, a long time ago, and he was a, a colleague of mine during my early career with CSIRO. I'd also like to single out uh, Chandler Lovin for her work in um, organising this event. <laughs> Out 
Um, I'd like now to invite you all uh, to join our presenters. Yeah. I'd just like to uh, thank you, Alan, for your, for your work here tonight. I think it's uh, been a wonderful MC. I think you're an absolutely outstanding uh, asset for the, for the Northern Territory Science community. And I look forward to working with you and to all the people in the room uh, to support the forum. Uh, I, I'm reticent to correct an Australian chief scientist, but um, I, 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 my intent would be not to, for the forum to work through me, but for me to support the forum to work to you. So thank you, Alan. Um, and, and I'll, I'll allow you to finish with your closing remarks.